Hello, every peoples. So yeah, what you're seeing uh, seeing on your screen here, nothing special, right? It's just it's just OB64 being OB64, running perfectly normal on a frickin' Vita. <laughs> so uh, uh, see, so yeah, it turns out uh, the Daedalus folks uh, they actually got back to me very shortly after the last video went up, um, in order to uh, well, in order to uh, to correct my dumbness on making this thing actually work. So it turns out, yeah, you can absolutely get this to work right. Um, what I was mentioning last time about like you can't seemingly use the modern renderer, you totally can do that, but uh, it takes a few steps. So let me go ahead and uh, explain. So, all right. So first of all, uh, let's. Uh, where do we start here? First thing you're going to need, you're actually going to need this. You're going to need your Daedalus X64. Um, there's a couple ways you can get it. Uh, you can either go online and just Google that mess, and it'll come up with the latest version. Or, uh, if you are a lazy idiot like myself, uh, you can go ahead and go get the, uh, the homebrew browser, or you might already have it. Normally, you'd actually have an icon on this. I've been too stupid to actually go get those fixed. It's fine. It's fine. Anyway. Whichever way you choose to get it, uh, you get your Daedalus X64, uh, you get that uh, mess installed. If you didn't know how to install stuff in your Vita, uh, presumably you've at least modded it before, in which case you just go to your Vita shell here, uh, you get your VPK files, you just push on the VPK files and they install stuff, and then it works. So, alright. So, for example, it's one of these, they're always blue. At least in my case, they're always blue. You install it, you get stuff. So, to show the extra steps that are needed here, uh, back to display, okay. So this is the thing that's needed, um, you'll see the link in the description. So it's uh, some kind of shader recompiler dealie. Anyway, here's what you need. Uh, I need the package installer launcher, uh, so that would be uh, this, uh, this thing that I was just showing. Uh, that would be this dealie over here. Uh, so basically this thing, um, what you do, um, like, a, like it says in the instructions, as you'll see, uh, as you go over to your, uh, uh, to your thing here, you go over to your Vita shell. Uh, basically, for those unfamiliar, your Vita shell is basically, you're looking underneath the hood at all the files. So, you go over here, you make a folder called package, and you just dump all that crap in there. Um, you can, you might as well just put the, uh, the, the, uh, VPKs for the other files. Personally, I found it easier just to start with open, just making a package file, dumping everything in there, and then I have the VPKs here before. All right, all well and good. Um, so you may, you have to uh, you have to make sure they're all in there. Uh, then you run the VPK for the uh, uh, the package installer. Uh, so again, just follow the instructions. Be very careful about it. And then from there, you have to run the uh, uh, the actual. Uh, you have to run these files. However, uh, the way you do that is you go and you launch this thing, because after you use that VPK, this thing will appear. Um, and then from there, it comes up with this kind of uh, menu. I'm not going to push anything right now, but you go right here. Uh, you go to UXO slash package, and you tell it to inspect your package, and then, yeah, you have to install them in a particular order. Um, so the one that's got the name that's not quite like the others, um, that's going to be your 1.0. You install that one first. Then look closely at their file names, because, um, actually, let me just show you. I, I don't think it'll actually run it unless I uh, specifically select them. I'm just scared of breaking anything now. Um, anyway, uh, right now, I think because I'm streaming, it'll just give me the black screen. Um, if you get a black screen at any point, by the way, uh, that means that you have to go disable your plugins. So if you have any plugins that are running under UXO, uh, you have two options when doing these. They're either running under UXO or URO. Uh, any of your UXO ones need to be disabled. Um, and or apparently it doesn't work while streaming or something. Anyway, um, so yeah, you, you install the 1.0, then the 2.0, then the 0.201. Um, at which point uh, you go and you use the VPK to make this shark food thing happen. Then you push the shark food button, and congratulations, you can now use the uh, you can now use the other uh, other option here. So after you've done those steps, again, just follow the text instructions. My video instructions are going to be hot garbage because this is not something I usually do. I'm just really excited that this, that this works and wanted to share it with other people. Um, anyway, so uh, so yeah. It's online right now, that's why it's checking for compatibilities and stuff like that. So this is your main Daedalus menu. Um, if you go into your into your files and, you know, put both versions of Ogre Battle 64 in there, technically there's three. Um, 
I don't think Rake's ever finished the third one. Uh, I didn't say anything about that. Anyway, moving on. Um, so... Oh, God, now I... Uh, he's going to send me an angry email. Okay, anyway. So, uh, what are we doing here? Um, so we go over here, you go to Render, uh, go to Modern, and there you go. Um, personally, I found it uh, running uh, running best and with the fewest issues. Uh, setting texture caching to accurate. Uh, make sure bilinear is off. Uh, Post-processing, anti-aliasing are off. Uh, High-risk textures aren't needed. Uh, Min-maps, I'm not 100% sure what those are even for. Uh, most of this stuff, I'm not really sure what it's for, uh, but this is the one that seems to make it run better. Um, for CPU, uh, dynamic recompilation, and then uh, words access and loops optimization. Um, High-level emulation, I think that does something. I'm not 100% sure, but it probably does something interesting. Um, these two, uh, both of them cause some weird jank to happen. Uh, if you wanted to listen to the depressing version of the uh, soundtrack, go ahead and uh, hit uh, sync audio rate, and it'll sound like you're in a funeral march. Um, aside from that, though, uh, yeah, that should be all you need. And then you hit the button, and then, and then happiness ensues, because you got this game that never was supposed to run on anything remotely similar to this, and sure enough, here it is. Because, yeah, the long road to get here as to why this took so long for people to emulate. Um, oh, and by the way, you probably need to remember to turn the audio back on. No, we didn't hear the little chippy sounds as they stabbed the Nintendo to make it, well, happen. Um, yeah, I feel like a lot of people feel like redoing that, uh, <laughs> redoing that intro uh, when it comes to, uh, to Nintendo these last few years. Feels like every, every month or so there's another story of them completely ruining somebody's fun. Anywho... Uh, so yeah, then it all runs up, everything's all well and dandy, and then you enjoy it. So, uh, why is it, why is it being all slow all of a sudden? So when I said earlier, it's not all text boxes, some of them do seem to show up fine, for whatever reason. Um, I feel like Deneb's is probably just done differently or something, so who knows. Um, like I mentioned in the last video though, leave the controls as standard, unless you've got, uh, uh control stick issues. Because uh, I know that uh, when I went and plugged in a PS4 controller to Project 64, it changed the controls around entirely. Um, and yeah, these ones more closely emulate the original controller, and it feels way more natural. So, you know, absolutely fantastic stuff there. I'm like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just amazed that we got here. Um, I say we as if I had any possible input in any of this, but, <laughs> but thank you to the Daedalus people. Holy crap, this is awesome. Uh, so yeah, good stuff there. Let's go ahead and let some of these fights play out. Um, if you don't want to deal with, like, little stutters and, and stuff like that, you can just go ahead and turn off the audio. Again, it's not going to be perfect, but it is what it is. Just to show that the animations are working right, I suppose. And then, yeah, if we turn off the audio here, then suddenly everything's running much smoother. Um... That's why generally I would probably prefer to just stay off of audio for the most part. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, do let me know. Oh yeah, I, I was explaining earlier why it seemed to take so long to get here. Because apparently the PSP uses some kind of similar workaround methods to the N64. Um, since the N64 itself was... Well, the thing itself wasn't too good on the technical side as I understand. Uh, apparently there were just a whole lot of weird ways that uh, programmers had to try to shove their games into the crazy box that Nintendo had given to them. Um, so yeah, it basically took a thing that kind of ran off of uh, the PSP, but then needed the extra punch of the Vita in order to be able to properly function. And, you know, here we are. So, alright, you guys have a good one, take care, enjoy, and uh, hope you're as excited about this as I am. Alright, have a good one.